Welcome. Our topic for today is the tracheobronchial tree. The tracheobronchial tree is a respiratory tree. is a subdivision network of the trachea that allows for gaseous exchange. It looks more like a presentation of an inverted tree. It's a subdivision network that gives birth to the tiniest branch to facilitate the exchange of gas. Through this diagram, this is where the trachea is. The trachea continuously subdivides until when it gets to the tiniest level where exchange of gas can occur. Why is this tree? What is the relevance? Does it present any form of function or importance? We know that basically it allows hair to pass from the larynx down to the lungs. It also creates a platform through which air is rooted into the two lungs. They also have epithelium lining within them that trap foreign bodies or dust. We've discussed this in our previous lecture. Go and check our lecture on the trachea. You will see how epithelium lining performs this function. They also help to create a perfect configuration for gaseous exchange. How is this tree formed? Is there any structural basis upon which they are formed? Come with me and see how this is formed. There are stages of division that are involved in this division network of the trachea. There are four basic stages, and these include the initial stage, which is the primary stage. It is also referred to as the main bronchial stage division. And this is followed by a secondary stage division, which is also referred to the lobal division. The third division, which is the tertiary or the segmental bronchi division. And we have the last division network, which is called the bronchioles division. If you look at each of the division, they are purposely created to feed a particular unit of the lung. If you look at the first division, which is also called the main bronchi division, it supplies the two lungs, while the secondary stage of division supplies the lobes of the lungs. And that is why it is referred to as the lobal bronchi division. And we have division that is also referred to as the segmental bronchi division because it supplies the segment of the lobe. The primary stage of division, which is the initial stage of division, this occurs at the T45 thoracic vertebra. And at the region of the trachea where this division occurs is called the carina. So, at the T45 thoracic vertebra, the trachea tends to divide into two. We have the right primary bronchus and the left primary bronchus. The right primary bronchus supplies the right lung, while the left primary bronchus supplies the left lung. So this stage of division basically is to allow her to be rooted into the two lungs. And that is why you have the division into two and not more than that or less than that. If you look at the structural configuration of the primary bronchi, they have the same presentation as the trachea. They are also seen with uh, C-ring cartilages, as you see in the trachea, and also the elastic fibrous membrane with the same pattern of configuration as we see in the trachea. There are differences between the right and the left primary bronchi. The right primary bronchus tends to be shorter than the left. It is about 2.5 cm in length, while the left primary bronchus is 5 cm in length. It is also wider and also more closer to the median plane. That means if you draw a midline passing through the trachea along the median plane, you see that the right primary bronchus tends to be closer to the midline marked drawn than the left. So this tends to, the left primary bronchus tends to shift further away from the median plane. So what could be the reason for these differences? Let's follow suit and see the possible explanation behind these differences. The first thing we'll be looking at is the alignment of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is like an inverted bone that tends to separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity so that organs within the thoracic space are held in place within that space. And also organs within the abdominal space are held within the abdominal cavity. So there's a form of demarcation that tends to separate the two 
cavities and also helps to keep the organs within them in place. And that is called the diaphragm. But the diaphragm does not have a uniform configuration. It is higher on the right than on the left. So if you look at the mark, you see that they tend to grow higher on the right part. And also, this is further attributed to the fact that the right lobe of the liver tends to push it. So this is another justification for it because the right lobe of liver is actually bigger than the left lobe of the liver. So the right lobe is bigger in mass, so it tends to push it upward to further enhance the increase in level that it presents. And this pushes the right lung upward tends to push the right lung upward because of the high presentation that it gives on the right side. The left lung bec becomes lower in alignment than the right. Right lung tends to be closer to the bifurcation of the trachea. And when it is closer, the right primary bronchus do not need to run a long distance before it gets to the lung. And that is why it tends to be shorter, wider, and also closer to the median plane. But on the other side, the left primary bronchus tends to be longer because the left lung is not as close to the point of bifurcation as the right. So the left primary bronchus needs to run a longer distance. So it tends to be longer and narrower. And that is why we have this presentation. Another explanation that could be used to justify this is the position of the heart in the thorax. The heart, as we know, is more situated to the left. So thereby pushing the left lung further away from the midline. This also makes the left primary bronchus to be further away from the median plane, thereby making it to run a longer distance before it gets to the lung. And this could be used to justify the reason why it tends to be longer and narrower. So the second stage of division is secondary bronchi division. And this is also called the lobal division because it tends to supply the lobes of the lungs. Remember that we already have the right primary bronchus and the left primary bronchus. So on the right side, because we have three lobes of the lung on the right side, it divides into three. So we have three secondary bronchi on the right side. Why on the left side, we have two because we have two lobes of the lungs on the left side. The structural configuration, remember we said that on the primary bronchi division, they have the same configuration as the trachea. When they get to the secondary bronchi stage, they tend to be irregularly shaped. So the cartilage begins to lose its C-shaped configuration and are being seen as an irregularly shaped cartilage. Another specific highlight that we see by the secondary bronchi division is the presentation of the epithelial and the epithelial bronchus. Epithelial means epi, which means above, while this is hyper, which means below. Remember our pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery basically is the only artery in the body that carries deoxygenated blood. Arteries are known to carry oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery. This is a saying that we know from inception. Why the pulmonary artery carry deoxygenated blood is because it's going to supply the lungs. Know that the lungs is like a reservoir unit for oxygen. It's like the opposite of the other vessels. Pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood, where pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood. This is not the norm. The norm is artery basically carries oxygenated blood, while veins carry deoxygenated blood. So this is the pulmonary artery. They are going to the lungs. You know the lung is somewhere around here so that they can trap in the oxygen content within them. So they, this is the common pulmonary artery that tends to divide into two. We have the right pulmonary artery and the left because we have two lungs, so they are going to supply the individual lungs. But there's a relationship, there's a configuration here between the pulmonary artery on the right and the division of the secondary bronchi. If you look at it, it enters below the upper bronchi division, while the lower bronchi division, it goes above it. So because the pulmonary artery goes above this first bronchi division, this is the hyperterial bronchus. And the bronchi here goes above the pulmonary artery, and this is epiterial, which means epi, epiterial. It is above the artery. So the right secondary bronchus here goes above the pulmonary artery. It is called the epiterial bronchus, while the lower one goes below it, it is called the hyperterial bronchus. The 
hypothyroid bronchus for that device. It is, remember, we said that we have three secondary bronchi on the right side. So it further divides into two. We now eventually have a three right secondary bronchi. But initially, there is a division into two, the upper and the lower. The lower further now divides into two to make it three division. So on the right side is where we have this unique presentation of a bacterial and hyperterial bronchus. On the left side, there is no such presentation because if you look at the way the left pulmonary artery runs, it runs over the entire division of the secondary bronchi division network. So there is no form of differentiation, whether one goes above it or one goes below it. Where you have the epithelial and the epithelial is basically on the right side. The tertiary bronchi division is the third bronchi division network. After the secondary, we have the, the tertiary. And this basically is called segmental bronchi because it supplies the segment, which are subdivision of the lobes of the lung. So on the right side, we have 10 division. While on the left side, we have eight tertiary bronchi division. The structural configuration of the tertiary bronchi division is seen to be a regularly shaped disc of cartilages, just like the secondary bronchi division. So the C ring cartilage is gradually being transformed into a regularly shaped cartilage. Why the next set of division is the bronchioles division network. So each tertiary further divides into smaller bronchioles. And the structural configuration of these bronchioles is that they do not have cartilaginous support. So you see that the cartilage that is seen from the trachea that becomes irregularly shaped, become disappearing. So you no longer see them in the bronchial stage of division. And also they are made up of basically smooth muscle layer. That is what you see. So there is no cartilaginous support within the bronchial division network. And the epithelium lining of the trachea, we say that is isolated to the stratified columnar epithelium. This epithelium is further transformed as they go down the tree. They become a simple cuboidal epithelium in the bronchial stage of division. So from being ciliated to be stratified down, when they get here, they are transformed into a simple cuboidal epithelium. Then the alveoli. The alveoli is the final stage of division. But before we have the alveoli, there's what we call the alveoli dot, which means that the bronchioles divide further into smaller terminal units that is called the alveoli dot. So this is the alveoli dot. Immediately after the formation of the alveoli dot, we have the rounded terminal egg that is called the alveoli. So this is the final division. It's a sac-like expansion at the terminal portion of the tracheobronchial tree. So this is the alveolar. The alveolar is the respiratory zone. This is where the exchange actually occurs. So the main target of the formation of the brachial tree is the respiratory zone where the exchange will occur. So it's like the functional units. So you see the capillary bed overlining the entire circumference of the alveolar. You can see each of them, they are lined by a capillary bed. And this capillary bed is supplied by the pulmonary artery. This is a final terminal division of the pulmonary artery that forms capillary bed that encycles the entire circumference of the alveolar so that the exchange can occur between them. And what facilitates this exchange is the fact that the surfaces of the alveoli are thin. Firstly, there is a loss of cartilage. There is a transformation of epithelium lining from being ciliated to the stratified columnar epithelium to being simple cuboidal epithelium in the bronchioles. Then finally, in the alveoli, what we have here is simple squamous epithelium. So you can see the transformation from beginning to the end, also loss in cartilage. All these changes basically are to enhance or to facilitate the exchange of gas. This is like a summary slide from the entire tracheobronchial tree, from the trachea down to the terminal alveoli. The iolene cartilage that forms the trachea gradually becomes irregular, then finally disappears down the tree, which means that there's loss of cartilage down the tree. Also, the amount of smooth muscle tends to increase down the tree. And also, there's a transformation of epithelium lining. What you have in the trachea is isolated to the stratified columnar epithelium. It goes down to become simple cuboida from the bronchioles, then finally, on the surface of the alveolar, we have the simple squamous epithelium. You can see that the thickness of being columnar 
to being cuboidal to being squamous, you can see that the thickness tends to reduce. So all this transformation basically is to allow for refinement so that the final edge will be thin to allow easy exchange. So this is a task force. I've tried to put up the trachobronchial tree and label each of the regions. We should be able to provide answers to what each of these means. We could also want to go further to do this why test, as we have a lot of why, why, why is this happening? Why, why does this exist in this lecture? So we may want to try this. So the first one I want us to look at, why do we have the formation of the trichobronchial tree? Does it have any relevance in relation to maybe respiration? Why is the right primary bronchus shorter and closer to the median plane than the left? Why do we have that kind of presentation? Why aspirated foreign body may likely find their way or enter into the right primary bronchus rather than the left? Remember when we talk of the alignment and the closeness to the median plane, we say that foreign body may likely enter into the right primary bronchus. So we should be able to justify why this is considering the kind of alignment that they form along the median plane. Why there is a loss of cartilaginous deposits down the tree? Why do we have the gradual change in configuration? And finally, at the terminal end, loss of cartilage. Is there any justification for that? Where is there also transition of epithelium lining down the tree? Remember, we say we have a ciliated to the stratified epithelium too being simple cuboidal, then finally to being simple squamous. Why do we have these changes? Why don't we have a uniform type of epithelium lining the entire tract? So we should be able to provide answers to this Y test. And hopefully by the end, then we should be assured that this lecture is good enough for us. So thank you for your time. Let's continue to upgrade through my channel. We'll see you in the next class.